neuromuscular blocking drugs are commonly administered during an operation to facilitate intubation and or provide muscle relaxation for a surgical procedure. The two main classes of these drugs are the competitive non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs such as rocuronium, cisacicurium, mivacurium, and pancuronium, and the non-competitive depolarizing drug succinylcholine. Rocuronium has an intermediate duration of action and is the most popular neuromuscular blocking drug currently used in Canada. Mivacurium is no longer available in Canada. The use of pancuronium has declined dramatically in the last 20 years due to its undesirable association with residual postoperative neuromuscular blockade. While there have been many different non-depolarizing relaxants available for use in the past, from a practical perspective, rocuronium and cisatricurium are currently the two most commonly used non-depolarizing relaxants in Canada. The recovery from the neuromuscular block produced by a competitive non-depolarizing drug can be facilitated by the administration of an anticholinesterase agent such as neostigmine. This drug blocks the breakdown of acetylcholine, resulting in an increase in its concentration at the nicotinic receptors at the neuromuscular junction that competitively decreases the effect of the neuromuscular blocking drug. An anticholinergic drug such as glycopyrrolate is commonly administered with neostigmine to counter neostigmine's muscarinic cholinergic effects. Unopposed muscarinic cholinergic receptor stimulation by neostigmine would otherwise result in significant bradycardia increased respiratory secretions, and increased bowel peristalsis. Succinylcholine produces a depolarizing, non-competitive neuromuscular block that cannot be reversed. Administration of 1 mg per kilogram of succinylcholine causes a rapid paralysis within one minute of administration. As succinylcholine binds to and depolarizes the neuromuscular receptors of the skeletal muscles, the caregiver may observe uncoordinated muscular contractions in the patient referred to as fasciculations. These may be minor or absent, but occasionally can be vigorous and forceful. Profound skeletal muscle relaxation occurs after depolarization of the neuromuscular receptors. Spontaneous recovery usually occurs after five to eight minutes from the time of succinylcholine's administration. The termination of its effect is the result of succinylcholine diffusing away from the neuromuscular junction and undergoing hydrolysis by plasma cholinesterase. Succinylcholine has rare but unique and significant potential side effects that the clinician must be familiar with prior to administering it. The specific side effects of succinylcholine are discussed in Chapter 12 of the Ottawa Anesthesia Primer. Stimulation of the ulnar nerve is commonly used to assess the intensity of muscle relaxation as well as the recovery from the neuromuscular block. A force transducer can be used to record the muscular response to an electrical stimulus. A variety of electrical impulses can be delivered to assess neuromuscular function. Examples include a single twitch stimulus, a train of four stimulus, a tetanus stimulus, and a combination of a train of four stimulus with a tetanus stimulus. When a brief stimuli of two hertz intensity are delivered over a period of two seconds, the muscular response can be recorded and is commonly referred to as a train of four response. By comparing the muscular response of the fourth stimuli to the first stimuli, a train of four ratio can be recorded. With a non-depolarizing neuromuscular block, the number of responses to the four stimuli progressively decreases as the intensity of the block increases. Adequate muscle relaxation for surgery occurs when only one of the four twitches is observed. This corresponds to a 90% blockade of the neuromuscular receptors. With a deep neuromuscular block, delivering a train of force stimulus will result in no muscular twitch responses. Before reversing the effects of a non-depolarizing neuromuscular block, spontaneous recovery of the block should be such that at least one or two twitch responses to a train of force stimulus is observed. Recovery from a non-depolarizing neuromuscular block is deemed to be complete when the train of four ratio returns to 90%. Characteristics of a non-depolarizing neuromuscular block include a slower onset and longer duration of paralysis compared to succinylcholine, a train of four ratio that is less than 0.7, a muscular response that fades with a tetanus stimulus and is subsequently enhanced after a tetanus stimulus has been delivered, 
and the ability to enhance the recovery or in effect reverse the neuromuscular block by administering neostigmine. Characteristics of a deep polarizing non-competitive block produced by succinylcholine include a rapid onset and recovery from muscular paralysis, no fade in the muscular response to a tetanus stimulus, no facilitation of the muscular response following a tetanus stimulus, the inability to reverse the paralysis, and a train of four ratio that is greater than 0.7. The time required to achieve paralysis with a competitive non-depolarizing drug can be reduced by the administration of a larger dose of the drug at the expense of a longer duration of paralysis. The return of the twitch response to the electrical stimulus signals the spontaneous recovery from rocuronium. The recovery can then be facilitated by the administration of neostigmine. The administration of succinylcholine results in a rapid neuromuscular block. When a force transducer is used to monitor the twitch response to a train of force stimulus, a progressive decrease in the height of all force stimuli is observed. One milligram per kilogram of intravenous succinylcholine produces a deep neuromuscular block that is usually achieved one minute after its administration. A deep block corresponds to the absence of a muscular response to the electrical stimulus, and this typically persists for several minutes. Spontaneous recovery from the block usually occurs after five to 10 minutes as succinylcholine diffuses away from the neuromuscular junction and is hydrolyzed by plasma cholinesterase.